this picture that I find uh, sort of funny and amusing. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone. Um, I really had a great time tonight, or this whole week, this last two weeks. Um, I really felt like a part of the team you guys brought me in. And, um, went out to lunch with a bunch of you, got to know everyone. I think I've been in meetings uh, straight the last week. Um, so I think I've met everyone at least once. Um, if not, you know, approach me afterwards, so I'd love to chat a little bit. Um, so I hope I get to make it out here again real soon. Um, so that being said, I guess, you know, thank you so much. I've had a blast when to go back to the U.S. and, you know, rave about that and see when I can come out here again. Um, so getting to the presentation, you're probably wondering why there's a cat on an awning. Um, so today I want to talk about um, courage. Courage is about exploring uncharted territory, right? And that's what we're actually all doing. Um, we're working at a product-driven company, right? Not a services-based company. And with that, no one's done what we're doing before. There, are, there is no rule book that we can follow. Um, so we really have to take it upon ourselves. Um, with that being said, you know, we're not going to get it right the first time. The, but the trick, though, is to experiment, to really create a culture of experimentation. Does this look familiar to anyone? I actually want some audience participation too. Are you guys aware of, of what film this is? You can shout it out if you know. Snow White. Snow White. Exactly. Do you know who created Snow White? Walt Disney. Exactly. Walt Disney um, was actually, uh, Steve Jobs looked at Walt Disney a lot and emulated him a lot. Um, so Walt Disney did this in, I think, about 1937. This isn't the first time he experimented with color, though. Although he was one of the pioneers in color in film. But what he did is he knew how to experiment. He was actually, well, I, I, I consider, one of the first startup entrepreneurs. I uh, saw, I went to uh, the, the Disney Museum in San Francisco, and I learned about this a few months ago, and I sort of said, you know, this aha moment, wow, like, entrepreneurship wasn't invented, you know, 10 years ago. It was being done in the 20s. What he did was he experimented with color um, through a short film called The Skeleton Dance. So before, you know, investing a whole lot of money and time and resources, into Snow White, as this picture, he did it in short little bursts. He experimented and refined the process over a few years with the skeleton dance, and took those learnings in that process and rolled it into Snow White, and made it such a success. And so that brings me to this. A failed experiment is only a failure if you don't learn from it, right? So it's okay to fail as long as you get some lessons learned, and that's what Walt Disney was doing, right? He didn't nail color on the first try. It took him several times, several steps. But once he got it right, he took those learnings and rolled it into Snow White. Uh, the second theme I want to talk about today is rise of the intrapreneur. Are you guys familiar with that term, intrapreneur? So intrapreneur is just like an entrepreneur, but within a company. So all of us right now. Next question. Do you guys know what these things have in common? And I'm not expecting you to know. But do you know what these things have in common? They were actually all created by entrepreneurs. So we take an example of, um, of the Sony PlayStation. So this engineer named uh, Ken Kutaragi, he was at home one day and, and, and was watching his daughter play the Nintendo and realized and you know, took notice of the poor sound quality. right? And he thought, if I can figure out a way to improve the sound quality, I can improve game quality. And so we did some research on the side and figured out that a dedicated sound chip would improve that game quality. He pitched that to Sony, Sony loved the idea, and the PlayStation was born. The next thing is being data-driven. So that's something that all entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs need to have. Because we're exploring this uncharted territory and there, are, there is no rule book, we need to be able to you know, measure, look at, and iterate, right? And the only way to iterate is to look at the data. So you can't improve if you don't know what you're measuring. So when we're building new products and new features, we should really be asking ourselves, what determines success, right? What is the success of this feature, or of this product? And we should be doing that from top down, whether you're you know, business, product, engineering, ops, we should be asking ourselves, what is, what is success here? Right, because it's not always you know, no bugs, right? I think as an engineer, that's the first thing you think of, right? And that's sort of the, uh, the micro level of what you're doing on a day to day. But if you step back a second and say, okay, beyond the bug measurement, what determines success of this feature or this product? Um, this is a picture I, I love, so I, I threw it up. I just found it on, on Google uh, a few days ago. And why I like this picture is you know, really showing that, you know, exploring new creative solutions to problems. 
And for example, this kid right here, he didn't want to reach over to drink his soda, so we invented a device so that he can sit comfortably in his chair and drink the soda. Um, why I like this is because it's about thinking differently, right? And so that's not to say that you know, we don't want to see what others are doing, learn from their successes and their failures, but what we want to do is remind ourselves that second place doesn't win, right? And so we only win if we're different. We need to differentiate ourselves, right? Um, and so we should keep that in mind when we're developing software as well. You know, what are others doing? But what are we doing to get a, you know, to leapfrog um, the others um, that are vying for the same business as us? One of the ways to do that, um, this is one of the things I, I've, I, I was thinking about with Buzztable, was really do everything at 80% except for two things. And those two things do better than anyone. So, you know, think about those things you know, over and over again in your mind and, and perfect them down to the, the most minute detail. Um, and a, an example of this would be, you know, our waitlist. So this is our guest manager product, right? And for those who aren't familiar, I can show you guys, um, give you a demo afterwards. So with this, a lot of things we did at 80%, right? We didn't build, we didn't scale prematurely, we didn't build really deep, we built shallow. But what we did is said, okay, for this product, what are the one or two things that we really need to nail, right? Which means, what are the one or two things that if we get right, will make a success? And if we think further down into that, what the users that are using this, which are hosts at a restaurant, what do they care about most? What are they doing most? And what that is, is they're entering someone's phone number. And so with that one piece of, of information, we said it was most important to get that right, to get the ease of information entering um, quick, fast, and painless. And so instead of bringing up a keyboard, right, so this is a very simple feature, but this is showing you how, how we're thinking so deep on this. So instead of bringing up a keypad or bringing up um, even just the keyboard with the numbers at the top, we presented this keypad without having to bring up a keyboard, which saves two or three seconds, but because they're doing this so much, they found this very valuable. So when um, restaurants were comparing our system to two or three other systems, the first thing they said was the ease of entry of your system was better than anyone else. And that stood out. And that's what got us the business. So sometimes it's the, the, the small little things that really make a difference. So we didn't think a lot about scaling at first. We thought a lot about the you know, input of data and really just like the, the core value problem. So um, a little bit to reiterate, uh, focusing on the MVP. Um, and really M for minimal and reminding ourselves of that. So, you know, what's the, I like to think of is, what's the least amount of work we can do to get the product shipped so that the restaurants, you know, give us a thumbs up, so that they're satisfied, right? We don't want to, you know, come close but not meet their expectations. But what's the minimum we can do now? Because obviously we're going to iterate a lot, right? And especially for, for V1 products, we don't always know what the restaurants want. They don't always know what they want. So we don't want to invest a whole lot into that if we're gonna change things. So instead, let's build you know, that minimal piece and then get feedback and work with them to iterate. And that goes to you know, building shallow features as well as you know, it prevents us from premature scaling. So instead of focusing a lot on, okay, this is how many app servers and database servers we need and all this management configuration, focus on what they see, right? They don't see any of that. They want it to work, they see it when it doesn't work, right? Well, they don't see it when it works. Um, and so what they do see is that the, the user experience. And so we need to get everything right, but we can start at the user experience level because that's what they, what they see and iterate from there. And one of the, one of the last points I have um, is really success is about timing. Um, and as this picture, you know, surfing apparently is also about timing. And more specifically, it's about doing the right thing at the right time, right? And so that kind of goes into the premature ceiling as well. So we don't want to invest heavily in certain things if we don't have enough data to back them up. So it's really thinking about, um, you know, for example, I had a meeting earlier um, with the POS team. We're trying to think about integrations, right? And it's really easy to say, okay, let's let's figure out how to integrate now because we're in the same room, we're meeting, you know, we like each other. Um, so let's figure out how to work together. But now, when we think, when we take a step back, is that the right thing to do at the time, right? That's going to require. That's going to have a debt cost, right? Um, and it's, it's feasible, we can build that, that's not the problem. But you know, if we think forward a little bit, okay, so let's say we do go and build an integration right now, and then we ship it in three months. What's gonna happen in month four, right? Are we gonna have usage? And so if we think through that, well actually right now, no, because we work with two different types of restaurants. 
And that's okay because now we're getting additional market share, but maybe it doesn't make sense to integrate at that moment because while we can, you know, technically, maybe we shouldn't from a business perspective, maybe we should spend those dev hours doing something else, right? And that's what I mean by doing the right thing at the right time. And so a lot of times speakers, they, they leave with a quote, and I'm not going to change that model at all either. Um, so the quote um, is basically um, has to do with the theme of you know, entrepreneurs um, and uncharted, ter uncharted territory and courage in general. And you guys have probably read this already while I'm talking. Um, but it's never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, that's the only thing that ever has. Thank you.